Come with me. Go ahead, I know what's coming. You do? Sure. We're not at war. Planes cost money, taxpayers' money. Washington's making it hot for you, appropriations are being cut right and left. That's about it, isn't it? That's part of it, yes. Planes cost money, but planes can be replaced. Lives can't be. You cracked up once last month. There's nothing wrong with the planes. I know. Just my bad judgment. No excuses. We don't give medals to dead pilots around here. Who says I want a medal? Who says you can wreck a plane for the pleasure of killing yourself in style? I see your point. Well, if you do, pull yourself together. You've got a tiger by the tail. If I don't let go, I'll have no choice but to ground you. Is that your privilege? Is that all? No. I want to find out what's eating you. Man to man? Yes, man to man. There was a Japanese who saved my life in the Pacific. He was an educated man, a Columbia graduate, majored in philosophy. He said the world doesn't give a damn how the man inside us ticks, so long as we keep their time, so long as we do what they say. I'll try to be a good Joe and do as you say, Colonel. Don't ask me to cry on your shoulder. Okay, Yarnell. You're grounded. Until we can get a reading on this whole job. Yes, sir. Yarnell. I want you to go to Latham. But I made it clear I wasn't going. You said you'd be a good Joe. Look, Colonel, Donald Beasley was a last-minute replacement. If you asked me today what he looked like, I, I couldn't describe him to you. Why should I attend a memorial to his death? The man has been dead for so many years. He was your navigator. And another man was my mechanic and another my wingman. I don't worry about those guys, whether they're dead or alive, and they don't worry about me, which is okay with me. Would it make any difference if I told you that Washington wants you to go to Latham? Washington? Yes. The boy has pulled. You mean this trip is really necessary? I don't want to make this an order. Why would Washington want me to go there? They didn't explain. I'd appreciate it if you'd change your mind. You let me know. That's all, Pike. Yes, sir. The Major should be checking in any... Say, that's Major Yarnell, right there. Thank you very much. Surely. Major Yarnell. Major Yarnell? Pike Yarnell, yes. I'm Christina Beasley. Donald Beasley was my husband. You are the man who's on the raft, aren't you? I am. Well, we wrote you before. Who's we? Mrs. Beasley, that's Donald's mother and I. Oh, yes, yes, I remember. We sent you two letters, one last uh, I year. I got them, I got them. And you chose not to answer. Well, you, you ask questions I couldn't answer. If you'll excuse me, I want to get out of this. Major, you're not married, are you? You mean it shows? And you have no family? No, I never used it. Of course. Or you'd understand how a mother and father might want to talk to the man who was with their son when he died, who sat with him and shared. You forget your husband was washed overboard. I didn't hold his hand or listen to his last words. But you spent many days alone with him on that raft. You couldn't have forgotten all that was said. Mrs. Beasley, I'm a test pilot. Every day I have to clear my mind of what happened yesterday or I couldn't fly again. 
you'd do better too. To, to accept the fact that your husband's dead. Dead and gone, all of him. No. No, not all of him. He left something behind, even if you don't want any part of it. What makes you so sure I don't? Look, if I had five lives to live, I'd, I'd dedicate one to love, one to the memory of your husband, so that you wouldn't think I'm so hard and tough, and uh, one to being a millionaire comic or a trombone player. But I was stuck with only one life, so you'll forgive me if I don't want to waste any part of it. Forgive me for troubling you. Just a moment. There is one thing I want to know. Who sent you? His mother. Why is Washington so interested in my attending that ceremony? We're building a veteran's hospital in Donald's memory. I don't think that's the answer. Forget it. Tell you all the pretty things that seashells whisper when you hold them close to your ear. Nice, huh? Yeah. Real nice. The nicest. She even looked great in a cardigan sweater. <laughs> Should have seen my mom the day I brought her home. Little secretary, you know? No Mayflower there. No, her folks probably came over as steerage. So what's with that bimbo in Tokyo? Oh, you know, I'd been priming that doll for months. She was ready. Ready for the kill and me coming in that target fast. So you have to show up and throw your weight around and force me to fly back with you. I'll knock it off. I didn't ask to have you assigned to me as a disciplinary case. Somebody up on top wanted you kept out of trouble. The old man figured I was the guy to do it. Well, then why don't you do it? You got me into this, now get me out of it. Save your energy, will you, kid? What day is it? Oh, what difference does that make? We're not gonna make it. We, we'll never get out of here alive. I know it. I. found us all right. Sure. How's that? And that? And that? And that? Want to try again, boy? Three sharks and you get a pretty teddy bear to take home to your girl. I have a drink. I'm drying a brass ball. Wait. Come on.
Easy, King. Easy, boy. All right, Christina, you can step down now. Give him a good rub down, Sam. You better put a bandage on that leg. Yes, sir. I'll do that, Mr. Harley. I'll do that right away. Have a good ride. Is he hurt? Just a slight limp. Nothing to worry about. He stumbled, but I He does think... that sometimes. He'll be all right. Oh, I'm sorry, Harley. I've driven him too hard. I know that. I shouldn't have. What is it? You seem so restless ever since you got back from your trip, Christina. What happened? Nothing happened. I tried to get that man to come here, and he said no. It wasn't very pleasant. Anyway, I told you and Virgilie all about it. Christina, wouldn't you like to have a place of your own? No, now wait. Let me finish. You know, I, we all love having you here. But it just isn't right for you to live in an old mansion cut off from the outside world by an iron gate. The gate's always open, isn't it? But you never take advantage of that. I just feel it doesn't make sense for you to bury yourself. You ought to go out and have dates. Virgilie needs me here. You know that. I wonder. It's not fair to say that. It isn't fair either for her to hold on to you. But she doesn't. She's made you stay here. I wanted to stay. And you told me you wanted me to stay. Yes, I know I said that. But my reason was... She still needs me. Is that really why you're staying? Did you love Donald so much you have to sacrifice everything to take care of his mother? Do you want me to leave? No. No, I don't. Well, then why? I... I just want what's best for you, Christina. I'll see you at the ceremony. Harley? I startled you. I'm sorry, dear. Have you had your breakfast yet? No, I haven't, Virgilie. Well, then why don't you come in and have it with me? Oh, we don't need to get another cup. I'll just rinse out mine, if you don't mind. No, I'll do it for oh, you. Oh, no, no, you sit down and take it easy. You must be tired. You know, when Donald came back from his ride, he always had breakfast with me. He was a good horseman. I bought him his first pony when he was seven. He was such a daredevil. He had so much spirit and pride and courage. Always taking chances. Too many chances. I sometimes think that's why he had to die. Oh, you mustn't think that. Well, I can't help it, dear. Thoughts come and go against your will when you're alone. You're not alone. Oh, don't think I'm not grateful that you're here, Christina. I am. It does me good to talk to you. Which one is he? Which one? Yes, Major Yarnell. He ought to be in the picture. He was with Donald in Tokyo. There he is, on the end. He has an interesting face, don't you think? Well, I could be mistaken. I met him only once. You don't think he'll change his mind and come here after all? No, Virgilie, I don't. I'm sorry. I really tried to make him understand how important it was for you. You didn't mention the Medal of Honor. Oh, of course not. Of course not. You think it's wrong that I want Donald to have that medal? Harley thinks so, too. Did you uh, ever discuss it with Harley? No. No, it's, it's just that... Well, I saw you talking with him a while ago, and I just thought perhaps... You, you couldn't feel the way I do. You were only married to Donald a few weeks, hardly long enough to get acquainted. Perhaps you want to forget him. Is that it, Christina? Do you want to forget him? No, of course I don't. 
You must never let anything come between you and Donald. Promise me that, Christina. Not anyone. I promise. Well, I better go and get dressed. Yes, of course. Will you do me a favor? I wish you'd wear black. Plain black dress. Will you do that for me? Yes. Morning, Bad. Oh, it's you. Hi. Do you know what day this is? Day? Did you say day? I thought it was midnight. Well, it's almost 10 o'clock, and the ceremony starts at 11. Oh. Christy, did you ever have a thing with a golf champ? Nope. Lucky girl. Who, me? Me. Was he that nice? The nicest. Would you like to see the scars? He taught me quite a few tricks. and uh, <laughs> I think I taught him some, too. Are you shocked? Nope. Because none of it's true. Could be true. Is that what you really want? I don't know. I don't know. I only wish there was some way I, I didn't have to stay with myself. I'm bored silly. Aren't you? No, I'm not. Oh. Christy, are you determined never to have any fun? Being mauled by a golf champ on the fairway is certainly not my idea of fun. What is? Wearing those widow's weeds and being holed up in your little mausoleum with all those trophies. Why don't you put them in storage? Simply because it would kill your mother. <laughs> so why don't you put them in storage? <laughs> Did you love him that much? I married him, didn't I? Christy, what are you trying to prove? That you're a martyr? Well, whom are you trying to please? My mother? The town? Donald? Well, why don't you answer me? Why is it so important for you to push and nag me all the time? Because you're an attractive woman and you shouldn't be without a man. What is it natural? Well, maybe I'm looking and I just haven't found the right one. And maybe you need a little help. Why don't you let me see what I can do? Well, I'll tell you what you can do. You can get dressed. The ceremony is at 11. Oh, yes, we mustn't forget the ceremony. Our Donald, our dearly beloved brother and husband and son, this paragon of virtue... Cut down in young manhood. We are gathered here to commemorate this tragedy beyond the measure of words, this irreplaceable loss, not only to his own family and friends, but to the country as a whole. I stand here before you with a heavy heart to remind you that we have a solemn duty to draw strength from this priceless heritage of courage which he has bequeathed unto us. This gift of life for which he gave his own. Guard it well. We owe it to him. We owe him allegiance beyond the grave because he showed us the way. He carried the flag. He will be forever with us giving us faith and courage in the future. And now, to dedicate this monument to his everlasting glory, Mrs. Donald Beasley. I want to thank you for being here, all of you. I know my husband would have been very happy to know that this new hospital was built in his name. 
And I'm sure he would have wanted to give it to you. Now I have been asked to do this for him. It's my great honor to dedicate the Donald Beasley Memorial Hut. Donald was my son. He sacrificed his life for you, willingly, gallantly, fearlessly. My boy was among the first to enlist. Mommy, I listened to my mother. I didn't have to be out here. She wanted to keep me out of this. Oh, I had to show her. Keep failing! Keep Come failing! On. Keep failing! Do this! Don't do that! You sound like my mother. Donald, my boy! You need your sleep to keep up your strength! Keep up my strength! What for? To take it a little longer, die a little slower! I'll shut your mouth! Up your nose! You keep saying that, I'll shut it for you! Keep failing! Did you hear me? What's the use? They're never going to find us. You know they're not. Why do we kid ourselves? Now look, kid. I don't know where you come from or what they taught you there. But you listen. Where I come from, they tell me that when you're down, you keep kicking. Until you're back on your feet again, you hear? Now get with it. Right, so I'm a coward. I know I'm a coward. I'm a coward. I'm a coward. I know it. I know it. I know it. Thank you for changing your mind. Only why didn't you let us know? You should have been up there with us. That's what I wanted to avoid. Excuse me. like him. Donald? Oh, you knew him. Yeah, yeah, I knew him. You aren't by any chance the man who was on the raft with him. Pretty sharp little guesser. Oh, no trick to that. For well, one, you're a stranger in town. Two, you look like one of those strong, dashing characters you see on the recruiting posters. <laughs> you know, the wild blue yonder boys. And three, I saw you looking deeply into Christina's eyes. Would you be interested in buying a girl a drink? I might be. I'm your girl. All right. <laughs> Walk, don't run. <laughs> Sorry. How do you like our town? I find it uh, pleasant, very pleasant. Really? If people were elephants, they'd come here from all over the country to die. Why did you come here? That's a good question. I just want you to know that your easy charm doesn't fool me this way. You're here because you want something, and uh, it isn't me. Why? You're a remarkably attractive girl. Oh, you noticed that, huh? I didn't think you ever would. Uh, the Beasley Fountain. 
Now, if you ask me, I'd say that Christine is a remarkably attractive girl, too, only uh, she's a widow of a Beasley. Do you know what that means in this town? She's taboo, out of bounds. Men lower their voices reverently when she's around. Strangers not expected to know the local rules. Here we are. Yeah. You, uh, you aren't underage, are you? If I am, you're worth going up for. I don't understand how you could have permitted that man to walk away from you, Christina. You knew I wanted to talk to him. Well, there was such a crowd, I looked for him, but he was gone. Hello, General Lee Hotel. Well, will you give him the desk, please? It's Harley Beasley speaking. I'll wait. Yeah, and if he isn't registered there, call the Birmingham. Why hasn't he called on us? I don't know. After all, we're his best friend's family. How do we know they were even friends, virtually? Oh, hello, Eric. Harley. Uh, oh, fine, fine, thank you. Eric. Do you have a Major Yarnell registered there? A Major Pike Yarnell? Oh, I see. Yes. Well, what is it, Harley? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, Harry. Goodbye. He came in this morning, took a room just to clean up. Is he there now? No. Where could he have gone? He must have had lunch someplace. See, there's the Falcon and the grill at the Birmingham. Harley, I wish you'd call the Birmingham. I don't like to do that, virtually. I hate to run out to somebody who's obviously trying to avoid us. I don't care if he's trying to avoid us. I want to talk to him. And I promise you, I'll get what I want. Drive a hard bargain and always keep a promise. That's the motto of the family emblem we haven't got. What brought you to Latham Pike? Oh, are you driving a hard bargain? I also keep a promise. I could give you a lot of information about things you'd like to know. Really? If I had a drink. How about going next door? Uh, how about another ginger ale right here? Okay. It's your loss. Liquor always loosens my tongue. Oh, I'm sure it does. Maybe a little later? I'm leaving for Jacksonville this afternoon. Well, I've been known to drive a man mad in a lot less time than that. I bet you have. Go ahead. Let's have the questions anyway. Okay. I was told Washington wants me here. Who is Washington? Grandfather Vance. He looks acts and talks like a senator. Only around here he couldn't fool people anymore. That's why I moved to Washington. <laughs> He's got most of the money, too. In other words, he runs the show. Wrong. Queen Mother does. If you ever meet her, don't look in her eyes or your blood will turn blue. Just touch your forehead to the ground. Would you like to? What? Meet her. Why don't you have tea with us this afternoon? I told you I'm leaving town this afternoon. If you come over early, I'll model the kimono that Donald sent me from Tokyo. That sounds tempting. I can also offer you a good look at myself in a bathing suit. Sounds irresistible. Or if you'd rather go someplace where we can next. Uh, let's, let's get back to your mother, huh? You aren't interested in mother. You want to know about Christy, don't you? I thought she said she was out of bounds. <laughs> come on, now what are you, teacher's pet? What do you want to know about her? How long was she married to Donald before he went overseas? Six weeks. Then she was a war widow. Three years with a living hero and too many years with a dead one. She's still in love with him? Who knows? Who cares? Let's get loaded. I could really use a strong drink now. Fine. Uh, make it a double ginger ale for the lady, huh? You know, you're gonna spoil my reputation in this town. <laughs> Harley, put in a call to Vance. Now? Yes, now. Tell him to get here as soon as he can. But you don't even know whether Yarnell is coming here or not. He'll be here. Christina will find him. Vance can't help you. Help me? You forget that Donald is your son as well as mine. He was. I wish you'd stop talking about Donald's if you were upstairs shaving. He's dead. Let him rest. Donald died a hero's death, and don't you forget it. I won't let anybody forget it. He's going to get that Medal of Honor if I have to get it for him myself. Call Vance, Harley. Call him now. What are you expecting to do, Virgily? I want... I want Vance to talk to that man. 
Why? Because your father's a go-getter, that's why. As he delights in reminding us he stole his first mule when he was only a little shaver. Then when he was grown, he was smart enough to see that the best thing that could be done with corn was to turn it into bourbon, and he made a fortune. That's the kind of a man your father is. Do you want him to buy Arnell? I want to make sure that Donald gets his medal. And the only way he can get it is if that man testifies to his bravery. And if he refuses? <laughs> what do you think? I think most men have their price. But not all men. One, two, three, four. Anna, Susanna, come back to Havana. Back to the Cuban Bay. Susanna, come back to Havana, back to my arms to stay. Yeah! <laughs> All right, everybody yeah, in this time, come on. Hi. Hello, Pat. You're expected home for lunch. Lunch? Yes, I couldn't think of anything duller than food right now. How many drinks did you have? How many drinks did we have, Pike? Do you remember? Well, uh, I'm very sorry. What are you sorry about? Spoiling your fun. Eight. Two at the Cotton Club, three at Lakeside, and, oh, I must have had at least eight. Uh, nine. Ginger ale. <laughs> Would you care to join us? No, thank you. I came to invite you to tea this afternoon. Mr. and Mrs. B. Uh, too late. He's already invited, aren't you, Pike? And not for tea. Just to see my kimono. After what he's told me about Japanese girls, I've decided to go completely oriental. <laughs> Will you come to see us this afternoon? Who's asking me? You or, you or the family? His mother sent me. Well, that's what you said the first time we met. I want to know if you want me to come. Oh, Anna, Susanna, come back to Havana. Back to the I want you to come. One more. <laughs> Benji, Arnia, would you like another cup of tea? Or would you like something stronger? A mint julep? Oh, no, no, thank you. I, uh, I never touched liquor before sundown. Uh, the tea will be fine. Matey Arnell, you said that Donald was assigned to you in Japan. That's right. Well, in the last letter he wrote, he said he was going to remain in Tokyo. What happened? What happened? Hello, everybody. I'm sorry to be late, but it's Bessie's fault. My brother Marcus, Major Yarnell. Oh, pleased to meet you, sir. How do you do? Uh, Bessie, meet Major Yarnell. Very pleased to meet you, Mrs. Beasley. Oh, not so fast, not so fast. Bessie and I are just good friends, that's all. Well, what do you mean by that's all? Sit down, Bessie, and have a cup of tea. Oh, yes, right here, Bessie. Marcus, there we are. Major, you were saying earlier that when your plane caught fire, you were alone, you and Donald. Where were the others? Don't you usually fly in groups? Well, that's right, sir. Usually we do. And at that time? At that time, we started out as a group on a sector search. That's a nautical term for scouting. Somehow we got separated from the others. How is that possible? Navigational error. Donald? It happens to the best of navigators. And how do you rate Donald? With the best, Mrs. Beasley. I'm very glad to hear that. Oh, what's a navigational error? That's what happens to you after the third martini. <laughs> Ford said that um, you were on that raft for 11 days. We've often wondered how long Donald was still with you. I'm afraid I couldn't tell you. See, the sun was boiling our brains. After a while, we didn't know or care what day it was. The day that Donald was swept overboard could not have been sunny. You heard of tropical squalls? What's that? Uh, Bessie, please. Uh, a squall is a short, violent storm. Thank you, Major. Now, wait a minute. Honestly, I saw him first. Hi, would you like to come up and see my kimono? Pat, we are talking about your brother. That's all this family ever talks about. Major, you do me a great favor if you let me show you Donald's room. It's getting late. And the Major wants to catch a plane for Jacksonville, remember? 
Yes, I know, dear, but this won't take long. You see, it's Christina's room now, but I've kept all of Donald's possessions in there. His mementos, pictures. Well, I'm sure the Major will understand. I'd very much like to see your room. I'll be right down the hall, Pike, <laughs> waiting. Excuse okay. us? I've never seen Donald's room either. Bessie. Well, I think he's cute. Is he going to stay for a while? No, dear, he isn't going to stay for a while. Because I'm driving him to Jacksonville tonight. And you can come along. Uh, now, that's enough. Not for me, it isn't. Dear, I forgot my shawl. I must have left it on the chair. Will you get it for me, dear? Oh, I'd be glad to. Oh, no, Christina will get it. And you better get your jacket, too, dear. It's suddenly grown chilly. You mustn't catch cold. We'll be upstairs. Dear lovely girl. I had no idea you knew our little Christina. I thought you said that it would invite me. Oh, I may have talked about it, but it was Christina's decision. She's so thoughtful and considerate, so devoted to me, simply because I'm his mother. What a pleasure it is to share a love so great that it survived death itself. Look around. It won't disturb you. Beautiful, aren't they? They were so young. So much in love. Thought for a while we were going to lose her, too. Shock of his death, you know. Is all his? Yes. I wonder if you'd like a, a small memento. Something of Donald's. No, no, I wouldn't think. Oh, no, no, you must be polite. I've often heard that men become very close friends when they've shared the dangers of war. Make me very happy if you'd accept a small token of my gratitude for having looked after him. As long as you were able. Give Here, I, I want you to have this medal Donald won. His first. He won at saving another youngster in a fire. That's how he grew up. Always helping others. Ready to risk his life. Boldly, bravely, recklessly. He ran. That's how brave he was. That's my medal. It's very rude of you to interrupt your mother when she's speaking. Oh, look at you. Why? Are my legs dirty? I must apologize for my daughter. You will not come downstairs until you've put some decent clothes on. Now, is that clear? Shall I show you the greenhouse, Major Yarnell? Pike, gets full of orchids, and I just know you hate orchids. Don loved orchids. I named this one after him, the Donald A. Splendid, isn't it? Yes, it is. He was brave until the very end, wasn't he? Of course he was, Mrs. Beasley. So comforting to hear you say that. A man's life is so quickly forgotten. I don't think this town's forgotten, Donald, judging from the way everybody turned out for the dedication. This town owes our family a great deal. They're very careful not to hurt our feelings. You see, I'm not fooling myself. It would be different if the country as a whole would pay him tribute, but I guess that's impossible. Oh, dear. I didn't think it would start so soon. Oh, I hope Christina isn't out in the park looking for us. You know, she's terribly afraid of thunder. Oh, Christina. 
I couldn't find your shawl anywhere. Oh, never mind my shawl, dear. You're so through, you'll get a chill. No, I'm all right. Really, I am. Oh, that's very kind of oh, you. Oh, thank you very much, but I don't oh, need it. Oh, but you do need it. She was very ill the last time she got chilled. We were afraid of pneumonia. You know you're not very strong. But I don't want it. I'm sorry, but, but I please insist. don't fuss over me. I will not allow you to destroy yourself, not even please for my don't. son. Without a coat. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> why? It strikes me as funny. I really don't know why I got so upset. It's really inexcusable. You know something? I don't think you could have found a saw back there. I think she wanted to lose you for a while so she could be alone with me. Why? I haven't any idea. No, well, neither have I. She's apt at something. She'll get around to it at the wrong good time. Aren't you afraid of something? No, not especially. Why? Am I the type? Why would she say you were? Afraid of thunder? Yeah. Oh, she must have been joking. You don't think she was? I've been known to be wrong. What do you have against Donald? Nothing. That isn't true. I've watched you. Every time we've asked you a question about him, something happens inside of you. You ask most of the questions. Why? He was my husband. I don't think you're as devoted to him as his mother claims you are. You're lonely. Oh, I, I have a, a very good life here. I have lots of friends. Easiest way to spot a lonely person is in a crowd. You can't run away from it, Mrs. Beasley. I know. I've tried. You haven't given up. You're still running. Perhaps. That's why you're leaving tonight. Perhaps. Do you have to leave? You want me to stay? Oh, I'm sure my mother-in-law would want you to. That's not what I asked you. That's my answer. One more day. Make it a month, Pike. Oh, I wish I could. Well, you changed your mind before, remember? A few days ago, we were practically on our way to Jacksonville. I know. Where's Christina? Hey, wait a minute. First come, first serve. Help me down. Okay. Come on. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you blouse. <laughs> What he did. He dragged me off my horse, and when I was down, he kicked me. Just because I beat him. Don't you let him touch you, Christy. <laughs> oh, I don't know after what Pat said. Oh, I only kick little girls. <laughs> but good. What's that? foundation of the house Chris and Donald plan to build. Did you plant this tree? Yes, we did. 
You let it die. Oh, it's the first time I've been up here in years. Come on, Pike. Usher on the house. Sorry we can't offer you a cup of tea. <laughs> no plumbing. <laughs> The main entrance is over here, isn't that right, Christy? That's right. And the hall and the dining room are over here. Oh, you go on, Christy. You know better than I do. Oh, no, you're doing just fine. Uh, I guess this must be the living room, huh? Yeah. That certainly has a beautiful view. And this, this would be the master bedroom. That's very, very nice. Even as a fireplace. That's what I'm going to have when I get married. A fireplace in the bedroom and a tiger rug in front. You see, Pike, there's a great advantage in having a fireplace in the bedroom. It, it gives you in the mood. Isn't that right, Christy? Vance is coming for dinner. I think we'd better... What? Change the subject? Okay, I can take a hint. I'll tell you what I'll do for you. <laughs> I'll go on ahead. You know, we, we haven't been alone since the day I arrived. I know. Why? It just so happened. It didn't just happen. You must know by now why I came here. I don't. You're not telling the truth. Are you? What is the truth? You were going to build a house here, live in it, maybe have children. It isn't true anymore. First time I met you, I said I didn't want to come to Lathan. It's true then, it isn't anymore. Don't ask me why I came here. I have to ask you. I have to know. Another thing, Vance. Major Yarnell seems interested in Christina. If someone would offer me a choice between holding a pretty woman and a nice, crisp $10 bill, <laughs> well, I hope no one ever puts me to the test. <laughs> However, if he is interested in the girl, that puts us in a good bargaining position. I don't want Christina mixed up in it. I think she'd like to have Donald have his medal. I never discussed it with her. Why didn't you? Because she might object to using pressure on Major Yarnell. What are you afraid of, Virgily? Afraid he'll take her away from you? <laughs> I beat you again. <laughs> Come here a minute, Vance. There's Major Yarnell down there now. Once in all her long life did I ever see my mother cross her knees while sitting. Nor would she ever permit her back to rest against the back of the chair. Will you sit over there next to Donald? There's no reason you shouldn't go on the stage, my dear. All you need in the theater is projection. And you have that in abundance. As a matter of fact, you have some of the finest I've seen in years. May we? Dear God, we who are gathered here, humbly thank thee for that which we are about to receive. We thank thee for thy blessings, for thy gifts. I ever tell you why I married her? Yeah, he told me, now pipe down. 
I ever tell you that my mother had a heart attack when she found out? Who cares? <laughs> That's right. Who cares about my mother? Certainly not me. You know something, Pike? I feel sorry for my wife. Don't make me cry. I never loved her. I married her, but I never loved her. We started to build a home. Nice little house just for the two of us. It never got finished. Finish it when you get back. <laughs> Who are you kidding? It was at the foot of a hill. She wanted an elderberry bush in front of the bedroom. So we planted one. Crazy. Elderberry bush needs a lot of water. But we planted it anyway. It was just a little thing. But when we got it in the ground, you should have seen her. She was so happy, she cried. I should have known then. Should have known what? That I could have loved her if I'd let myself. Gentle God, look after him. Help him if it be thy will, but thy will be done. Amen. Mr. Yarnell, or should I address you as Major Yarnell? Suit yourself, sir. You know, your name came up the other day when I was talking to Phil Rindon. Do you remember him? Certainly. He's my old commanding officer. And Donald's. Of course. He's a good friend of mine, and he said a lot of nice things about you. So don't you call him old. <laughs> I like old men. I'm delighted to hear it, my dear. Major, you may be interested to know that I have invited Phil to come down here for a visit. That's wonderful. I haven't seen him in years. Won't he be surprised to see me? No, no, he won't. He knows you're here. As a matter of fact, that's the main reason he's coming. Well? Well, what? We're all waiting. Why is he coming here is the first I heard about it. Oh, didn't I tell you, Harley? Colonel Rindon's going to put in a word for Donald to be awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. Must have slipped your mind, Virgilie. A Medal of Honor? Hey, that's quite a decoration. Isn't there a law that men wearing that medal must be saluted even by their superior officers? There's, there's no law about it. What I'd like to know is, Mr. Yarnell, are you in favor of Donald getting that medal? That's not up to me, is it? Your report said he died bravely. Lots of men die bravely, Mrs. Beasley. Not in this family. You'd be the best judge of that, sir. I am. I helped win this war sitting behind a desk, and so did a lot of other people. But my grandson died the death of a hero, and that has never been properly acknowledged. But it was. Not properly. I happen to have some friends in Washington, and they told me of other cases that have been overlooked. Did they ever tell you it wasn't up to them? Them alone? Of course it isn't. But when I told him of your testimony, plus the recommendation of Donald's commanding officer... Do you know what that medal stands for? Exceptional heroism. Over and beyond the call of duty. That's right. It's the highest military award this country can give. Well, we don't want anything less for Donald. What did he do to deserve it? He died for his country, and you are still alive. Are you going to sit in judgment on the degree of a dead man's heroism? You don't think he deserves the Medal of Honor. Is that it? Who am I to judge? Ah, that's the spirit, my boy. Now, all you have to do is to bend a little for a buddy who got unlucky. Haven't you ever done that before? Too many times. Of course you have. We all have. All it amounts to is goodwill. Now, as long as we have your goodwill, you'll have ours. And who knows? There may be a medal in it for you, too. 
Thanks very much, but I'm afraid I can't change my testimony. We are not asking you to change it. Just dress it up a bit here and there, that's all. It wouldn't hurt anyone. Except myself. I'm sorry, Mrs. Beasley, but... I'd like to help, but I'm afraid I can't. Wouldn't be fair to other brave men who died in this war. Do you know how many flyers won the Medal of Honor in the Korean War? Four. All for such exceptional heroism that... No need to wrap yourself in the flag, Yarnell. Just tell me what it's worth to you. I'm an old hand at these tactics. How much? Are you offering me money? It so happens that I'm one of the richest men in the state, Yarnell. I wouldn't want it said that I'd made you any poorer. You'll excuse me, please. Hooray! He told you, didn't he, Grandpa? Pat! And he told you, too, Mother. And the rest of us, we just sat here like dummies. That's what we all are, dummies. How could you have offered him money? I figured that's what he's after. Now, don't worry, he'll be back. I doubt it. Well, you do. You're so smart. So much cleverer than I am, aren't you, Holly? I'm just a blundering fool. But now let me tell you something. If it weren't for me, this family wouldn't have anything. Because you're a weakling and a coward. <laughs> you know, uh, I really think Yarnell's trying to get the Medal of Honor for himself. Well, then why didn't he say so? You're such good friends, Christina. Maybe you can tell us how to get him on our side. I am not on your side. Christina! Well, I can't help it. I think this is a rotten business. And I'm ashamed of you. Ashamed of myself. Excuse me. You will not leave this table, Christina. Go ahead, Christina. Leave if you want to. Hi. Hi. Pike. Pike. Please believe me. I wasn't part of this. Okay, I believe you. No, you don't. Okay, I don't. Now, will you run on home and let me be? Pike, you can't walk out on me now. I just can't believe that you didn't know what they were after. Did you know about that Medal of Honor deal? I didn't know they were going to offer you money. But you did know why they wanted me to come here. Okay. Pike. Are you a good swimmer? Fair. Donald was. So he told me. A magnificent swimmer. It has stayed champion since he was 13. But he drowned and you didn't. That's right. Nobody wins them all. So don't work on me and try to sweat me because he's dead and I'm not. Why don't I be a good Joe, a regular fella, and help him get the recognition he doesn't deserve? Which he doesn't. Why do you say that? Never mind. But I do mind. I want to know. I loved him. I don't believe that. I have a weird kind of devotion to him, that's all. You call everything weird that you don't understand. How can I understand what you're doing here? Staying in a house with a woman who's made a, a professional widow out of you. A living monument to her son. She hates you, don't you know that? Hates me? She's been like a mother to me. Donald would have wanted you to get away from here. He despised his mother. That's not true. Didn't you ever hear him mock her, her voice, her manner, the life she led her husband? Why do you think he enlisted? Why? To get back at her, to show her. She was trying to get him deferred and he was trying to get away from her. All his life he was trying to get away from her. That's why he married you, to show her he was... To show her what? Nothing. I, I was just... Nothing. You say things like that for nothing. Just because he's not here to defend himself against your lies. You, you're ruthless and vicious and jealous. Maybe I am.
Come in. Oh, it's you, child. I'm so glad you're here. I wanted to tell you I'm very sorry I lost my temper. I do hope you'll forgive me. I'd like to ask you a question. Yes, dear? Did you try to get Donald deferred? Well, I most certainly did. Of course, Donald had a mind of his own, so... Uh, why do you ask? I want to know. I want to know the truth. Why did he marry me? Well, why does anybody marry? Not anybody. Donald. Did he do it to prove something to you, to show you? Oh, you've been talking with Major Yarnell. That's where you've been. Letting him fill you full of his lies. Are they lies? That's what I came to find out. I don't know why my son married you. But if you want to know the truth, I was against the marriage. Oh, don't be shocked. There were reasons. Donald was young, younger than you. You hardly knew each other, and you certainly didn't have much in common. Still hurts, doesn't it? A Beasley in love with a secretary. And the secretary married him. But you didn't love him. You wanted him. That's why you persuaded him to marry you. Donald wasn't ready for marriage. He was young and carefree and happy, but you managed to take him away from me. And I called him a liar. Christina, where are you going? Away. Out of this house. You won't create a scandal. I won't have it. Oh, Christina. I didn't mean what I said before. I was angry and upset. Isn't it natural for me to be upset after all that happened tonight? All that's happened has been your own doing. Oh, please don't leave me, Christina. Please don't leave me. If I'm wrong, I'll, I'll, I'll make up for it. I'll do anything. Just don't leave me, Christina. I'm an old woman. <laughs> Come back, Christina! Mrs. Beasley, it's only me. May I help you? No. I'm sorry, but this is a small town. If I were seen walking in there with you carrying my bag... That's not true. I don't care about that anymore. Why would you even want to talk to me? Maybe we both said things we really didn't mean. You still think I asked I you to come here? I could be wrong. Would it help any if we kicked it around over a cup of coffee? Oh. Just coffee. I didn't mean that. I know. I, I'm probably the only man in this state who ever asked a girl for a cup of coffee and meant just that. Come on. Thank you. I needed this. And thank you for not asking a lot of questions about what happened at the house or why. Thank you again. What? Uh, he said you didn't smoke. Oh, I didn't then. What else did he say about me? You needn't be kind. Well, I... I heard him remark once that you were the kind of girl who looked good even in a, in a cardigan sweater. And then... And then there was a time when he said that you could hear the pretty things that a seashell whispered if you held it to your ear. Can you? Is there more? No. No, except once he... He showed me a picture of you that he used to carry in his wallet. <laughs> this is the wife, he said. I remember I... I made some appropriate remark, like... Not bad for a wife. That's an old joke. On whom? Okay, I'll shut up. Let's get out of the car. The 9.34 to Savannah. The Blues specially called it. He used to compose variations on that theme. He loved it. You loved him. With that certain kind of weird devotion. 
Well, a woman's had so little of all that a man has to offer. I still can't forget him. That, that's love enough for me. I didn't love him that way. I wanted to, but he wouldn't let me. Maybe that's what it was. He wouldn't let me. But you still can't forget him. He was my husband. We'd hardly met before. There was a telegram in my hand. Deeply regret to inform you. Do you know anything about hope? A little. The kind of hope that grows inside of you until there's, there's no room for anything else? Sure. For a long time, I didn't believe he was dead. And then there was no more hope? Oh, I had a, a guilty feeling I couldn't seem to shake. Like I'd failed him somehow with no chance to make up for it. That's why I stayed with his family. To try to give them something I couldn't give to Donald. No use. No use at all. <laughs> Did I say something funny? Ride that tiger, for we all must... You're laughing at me. No. Go on, finish it. I don't know the finish. Maybe if he had been found and properly buried with a marker saying, here lies final and forever. You'd be free then? Free? Perhaps. But mostly frightened. Of what? Being alone. Don't let me go back to that house. Are you always that honest? No. What are you trying to see? What is it? <laughs> Nothing. I, I guess it's just that I want to touch you. Don't worry, I, I won't. Hi. What's happening? Nothing. It's just time we got moving. You keep saying nothing. What would you prefer me to say? That I'm trying to keep my hands off you? I told you that. Well, there's something you haven't told me. Something you wanted to and didn't. What is it? I have a check, please. This isn't the way back. I know. I'm glad. What's behind us doesn't matter anymore, does it? You wanted to know if there was something I... I didn't tell you. Oh, that was foolish of me. Why should I care? There's nothing you or I can do about the past. Sure. Yes, I'm sure, Pike. Just be patient with me until I get used to love. Might take a little while. So if I get in your way. Maybe. Maybe we'll get rid of it. Of what? You're coming with me. Go on, drive around the block. It's the rear entrance for you. What are you doing here, Pat? Oh, don't ask silly questions. They're both inside waiting. Both? Mother and Dad. They've come to take the little lost lamb and bring her home. Don't let them even see you, Christy. I've got to get my things. You don't. You've got Christy. Isn't that enough? I'll take care of your things. I'll even knit you a pair of socks as a wedding present. If you... We'll just get out of here. I'll talk to them. Oh, Christy, don't be a fool. I'll say goodbye to Mother for you. It'll be my pleasure. In fact, it'll be the greatest pleasure I've had in years. 
I'd get out if I could. Why can't you? Why? I'll tell you why. Because I'm a fraud. I want people to think I'm tough and wise and sophisticated, but when you take off the cellophane, I'm just small town. Scared to go even as far as Atlanta alone. I, I would have gone with you, though. Well, Christy's got you, and at least we'll keep you in the family. Now go ahead, get going. Pike, what are we still afraid of? Nothing, really. Christy. Christy, don't be an idiot. Listen to me. Listen to me. Okay, but you're going to regret this the rest of your lives. And don't come back to me for sympathy. Christina. Won't you please come home with us, Christina? No, I can't, Harley. I'm sorry. But you can't stay here. The Beasleys don't stay in hotels, not in Latham. I'm not a Beasley anymore. Major Yarnell, I want to apologize. I want to tell you how sorry I am that my father-in-law forgot himself. He shouldn't have offered you money for something that can only be given freely and generously. Come on, Mrs. Beasley, I'm fascinated. None of us here, neither my husband nor Christina nor I, wanted to ask for anything more than what we thought was fair. Fair to my son, whom we all love so much. Don't use the word love, Mrs. Beasley. It sounds ugly coming from you. You didn't love Donald, you possessed him. You don't know what love is. You took from him and kept taking from him until there was nothing left but the empty shell of a man. How dare you? Virgilie, please, we, we can't talk here. Don't worry, Mr. Beasley, that's all I have to say. <gasps> Pat, Pat, get a glass of water, please. Bring her in here. Christina! Oh, George, George, will you leave us, please? Here. Here, Virgilie. That's all right. Here, drink this, Virgilie. You coming, Christina? Yes, in a moment. Putting on a good performance, Mrs. Beasley, but not quite good enough for me. Tell him to go away, honey. Tell him to go. Don't worry, I'll go. Christina goes with me. You might as well stop pretending. If my son were here, he'd know how to deal with you. Go, take Christina with you. You deserve each other. You never deserved Donald. I knew it and he knew it too. But he was too fine and decent and proud to admit that he'd made a mistake. But now that he died a hero's death... He didn't you... die a hero's death. He was not lost at sea. He was not swept off the raft. Then you killed him. Did you kill him? Yes. You didn't. What happened? Tell us, tell us, what happened? It was the eighth or ninth day. I, I don't remember. All I know is it was the sixth day we'd gone without water. We were past caring about anything. Testament, Donald Ashton Beasley. <laughs> Won't my mother be surprised? See ya. Wait a minute, how's she gonna get it? Take it to him myself. How in the hell are you gonna take it? Oh, shut up. Cab, we're not gonna make it. Oh, we will. I'm not. I'm gonna die. Everybody does. You too. Okay. I'm gonna die. Okay, but make it soon, will you? I'm gonna die. And... Oh, I'm gonna burn up on the insides. I'm gonna burn up. I can't stand it.
cab? Yeah. I'm going home. Don't let me keep you. God bless you all. Send me alcohol. Wait a minute, Tommy. You forgot to say goodbye. <laughs> Quit your belly aching. Stop wasting your strength and mine. I'll push you over myself. Ah, oh, hero. The big man, huh? With a big mouth. And a gun. Wouldn't be so tough if I had the gun, would you? Shut that big yap of yours so tight you'd probably never open it again. Something. Go ahead, do it. small coral island, Agoshima. There, in the shade of a mangrove tree, in a cleft in the coral, I buried him. That's it. So much for honesty. But it was you who reported he was swept off the raft. I figured I could do that much for him, to help his family. I didn't know his family. So the man was lost at sea. I didn't think that one little lie would hurt anybody. And it hurt all of us. And we all got tangled up because of one little lie. They're all lies. Everything you've told us I is a lie. Never have... Harley, tell him to leave us alone. I should never have come here. I shouldn't have told you this. But I did want to see you again. I wanted to say to myself, this woman means nothing to me. Pike, don't leave me. Arnold said he could have loved you. He wanted to come back for that. He, it's my fault that he didn't. If you walk out on me now, you'll never get clear of it. I gave him my gun. But not to kill him, sir. How do you know? How do you know I didn't want to get rid of him? Pike, listen to me. If you think you failed Donald, then he failed you too. You're not responsible for his death. It was not your doing. Don't you see he killed himself because he thought it was the only way out? He was always running away from his mother, from me, from himself. Do you want to run away too? You killed him as surely as if you'd pulled a trigger. Virtually. Let's stop. Christina! If you go away with this man, I'll see that justice is done. Justice? He lied about Donald's death. I'll make him pay for that. Virgily. Oh, don't worry, Harley. There won't be an investigation. I won't drag Donald's name through the mud. There are other ways of making this man pay for what he's done, and if you won't help me, Vance will. Let's go. No. You don't mean that. You can't mean it. I do mean it. I hold you responsible for the death of my son. And if Christina goes with you, I shall never let you forget it. I couldn't believe Donald when he said he hated you, but I do now. Christina. Right, she won't rest. I in... couldn't care less. But I do. I thought you said you were going to fight for me. Well, I am, it's only because, because I... Because you're afraid of her. Don't you understand what she can do to you? She can ruin your career, your whole life. Pine. I'll be in my room. Go after him, Christy, go after him. I'm sure you'll make the right decision, Christina. Harley, I think we can go now. 
You coming, Harley? No. If you force Christina to stay, I'm going to leave you. And I'll take Pat with me. Will you go with me, Pat? You wouldn't dare. I couldn't live with myself if I gave in to you again. You'd do that for her? Yes. You must be very fond of Christina. When she looked at Yarnell tonight, I saw something in her eyes that can't be bought or sold. Or demanded. She sold herself to Donald, didn't she? Before she came to our house, Donald was happy. And I was happy. He loved me. He loved me with all his heart and soul. I wanted to spare you this, Virgilie, but I can't. This isn't Donald's wallet. It's his last will and testament addressed to you. I don't think I've ever seen you cry like that, Virgilie. He couldn't have written that. He did. But it says he hated me. Don't you know why? No. No, I don't. Because all his life he was afraid of you. When you're afraid of a person, you begin to resent that person. Why should he be afraid of me? Because you robbed him of everything that was his and made it yours. I only wanted to love him. No, Virgilie, love means understanding, and you never even tried to understand him or any of us. Donald loved you when he was little. He loved you very much. But as he grew up, there was room in his heart for more love, and he tried to share himself with others, first with me and then with Christina. And when you wouldn't allow it, his love for you turned to hate. <laughs> What am I going to do now? I wish you'd ask, what are we going to do? We? You're not going to leave me, are you? I don't want to leave you, Virgilie. Do you know what will happen if we let Christina go? Yes, there are people in this town who will talk about us. But for how long? A few weeks, maybe, and then they'll forget. But if we hold on to Christina... We'll never forget. <laughs>